August 26th. A couple of days ago, the uh, German Grandmaster Wolfgang Uhlmann passed away at the age of 85. And I thought we'd look at some of his best games this stream. Um, also, about a week ago, um, uh, another Grandmaster died, Miron Scher, Scher S-H-E-R. He was uh, lived, you know, the last 30 or 40 years of his life in America. Um, he didn't play very much, you know, here, but he was a well-known coach, and he coached Fabiano, and he coached Robert Hess, and many other players, and lots of junior players you haven't heard of. And he was a very successful coach. Um, he wasn't one of the top 10 players in the world, but he was a very strong player. And then um, a couple of days, Ullman died. And Ullman was uh, top 10, top 20 in the world. Maybe never top 10, but maybe. Probably, you know, at his absolute best, he was maybe 15th best in the world, which is still pretty good. Um, so, yeah, we'll be looking at his games after we get our, our raid from Karen. Okay, so, you know, etc. Starting a little early today because I was helping Karen out the last 15 minutes of her stream um, since Spencer left at 8. And then, um, yeah, she'll give me a raid, help, and so on, mainly and so on. Also mainly, etc. Karen is going to raid you in a minute. That is correct. Let's refresh so we can... Uh, Zero viewers. All right, the refresh worked. Good, good. Um, if if you're watching on YouTube, you can watch live if you'd like by going to twitch.tv slash GM Benjamin Feingold, and you can participate in the chat and play and donate and spin in a circle. Um, okay, so for those of you who were here early, uh, in the chat, let's see who could answer the question first. Which opening was Ullman known for? Which opening? You're like, oh, that's Ullman. That's the opening he played. And the Germans are like, Ullman, who's that? Oh, he's mispronouncing it. It's Ullman. Ah. Et cetera. Yeah. French defense is correct. BCS RRR was, was correct. Now, this is not a well-known thing. And in fact, it's not on his Wikipedia page. But, you know, I'm a grandmaster, so I have some personal knowledge about grandmasters that you might not find on Wikipedia. Uh, Wolfgang was one of the first players, um, well, not, I mean, chess players, but one of the first people to uh, play the, the well-known game Dance Dance Re uh, Revolution. Um, that's not well-known. He was a great dancer, and um, that's why he was from the DDR. Yeah, so DDR um, could mean East Germany, could mean Dance Dance Revolution. We're not sure. It's not clear. But what is clear is he was one of the co-founders. That's what was clear. I think I heard Karen get a, a donation like in the other room. You know, like some sent to do's. Yeah. Hello. Now, don't confuse Ullmann with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart uh, because Ullmann was a better musician. Wait a minute. Something. Yeah. If you can't tell the difference, then get the puck out. Puck. Somebody already made that joke, but I, I made it better. Yeah. Yeah, he was East German when East Germany still existed. For more information about East Germany, um, watch the movie Stripes. Yeah. Hello from Iran. And I ran, I ran so far away. Okay, the rest, the rest of this stream will be in Farsi, so that, you know, Kassa's happy. Something like that. 
My uncle's name is Wolfgang. Yay! Karen has raided me. What a surprise raid from Karen. Now we went from 38 to 110 viewers. Hooray. Hooray for everybody. Yeah. It's Karen. Mm. Yeah. What if you take it to the dry cleaners? No. No? Anytime you get grease on, yeah. on cotton. Now, you sure you weren't cheating on me with Bill Clinton? What? Me what? The blue dress thing? Yeah, the dress. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Boat says weird champ. Yeah, terrible. That's a better name. It is? Yeah, because weird, weird champ, they're saying they don't like the Botev topless. All right. You got to catch up on your... Um, I don't think that's what it means, but all right. It is weird champ. Hey, they deleted the message. Man. I weird champed you. Man, Deshaun showed that guy. When you got on the Pog Champs. That was deleted by the moderator. Well, it, yeah. it's, you know... Normally, I would ban such a person, but Karen says I shouldn't ban them. See, you raided me with 74 people, yeah. and I still have very... Ah, you tricked me. It, it caught up at some point. Darn. Yeah, well, they were all waiting because I warned them. I said, don't go over there until I raid. Well, that's right. <laughs> Depends on what your definition of is, is. Or as Bill Clinton said on Family Guy, it's what your definition of jizz is. Right. Yeah. On Family... Let's see if you remember the trivia question. Mm -hmm. On Family Guy... Did Bill Clinton sleep with Lois or Peter? Both. You asked me that before. I haven't Bo seen that episode, though. Both, yeah. And, and, and what's funny is the reason that's related mm -hmm. to what we were saying yeah. is I made a DDR joke because Ulamans from the DDR, mm -hmm. and DDR also was Dan Stan's Revolution. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, and so, I, I, so I made some crossover joke, like before you showed up. But uh, in that episode, Bill Clinton is explaining to Peter, you got to go out and have a good time. And they go to an arcade, and Bill Clinton's really good at Dance Dance Revolution. He's really good have at it. Have you ever done Dance Dance Revolution? I've seen it. Um, I guess I can say this on the stream. Also, because there's somebody in the next stream. But my ex-husband really liked that game. The best guy I ever saw was this overweight Asian guy. Mm -hmm. He was big. And... He was holding on to the bars, and he wasn't even paying attention. He was really good. Like, he was, you know, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, 100 sentences. Thanks, Tariq. Um, oh, is Word Champ a banned word? What? I didn't know it was banned. I love that word. I, like I said, I Word Champed Ben the other day when he was in the chess chat. What, what happened? I guess he tried to say Word Champ, and it was banned. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great, that's my favorite uh, Twitch expression, Weird Champ. It is? Yeah. Right. I love Weird Champ. It, it is? What movie am I quoting? It is? Uh, Blazing Saddles. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Brooks is the governor, and they're like, Governor, it's your turn to speak. It is? <laughs> He's always very confused. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Now, have you heard of David Bronstein? Yes. Have I ever beaten him? I don't know. Yeah, of course. Oh. Of course. Yeah. I've played Bronstein several times. One of the longest train rides I ever had was with Bronstein because yeah. he was, you know, he was a boomer before that word existed. Mm -hmm. And he was like, in 19 Dickety, they did this to me. And I was like, ugh. Anyway, he was a good chess player and, and so on. I'll unban Weird Champ when I get a moment. Boo. Yeah, I, that one belongs back in. But, but it's my channel. I just want to ban everybody. <laughs> it's just me and Kangaroo. We're the only ones here. Can't you just Weird Champ them and be happy? <laughs> yeah, terrible. Okay, so um, as, as the chat knows and as Karen knows, Wolfgang was known for playing the French defense. And he was also known because he beat Bobby Fischer. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Uh, oh, you're doing U that in honor. U Ullmann. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ullmann was 11-time East German champion. And um, it was at the behest of myself that he stopped before he won his last two tournaments, but he refused. And he was actually confused. I said, you know, I, you should win nine. And he said nine, and I said right, and then he thought I meant no, and then he won two more. But what I meant was he should stop at nine. 
but he thought I meant the German nine, so he just kept playing in them and winning them. Terrible, basically. Yeah. Now, I beat an East German Grandmaster once, and I think I haven't played a lot of East German Grandmasters because, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't exist anymore. But I played Rainier Knock, which I'm not pronouncing right. I think he was in some music group in the 80s. Anyway, we played, and we had a 13-move draw, and I played Lothar Focht, right? And he was in the movie, Meet the Fochters. <laughs> And I beat him, and I've shown that game on stream. Those are the only two East German GMs I remember playing. Then, then East Germany did, no longer existed. So after that happened, Ullmann put his car in H because his country no longer existed. So that made sense. Yeah. Hey, you guys need to untime out weird guys. Who? I don't know what happened there. What? what? Mubot, I think, got him. Ooh, I don't know. A forbidden word. Yeah, weird, weird no. Guys need back in. The pronunciation was suspicious. That's right. Craft work is right. Although aren't, aren't they French? Okay. Um, yeah. Removed. Thank you. Lothar Schmidt. Dijon. Well, Lothar Schmidt. I actually, I played not Lothar Schmidt. I played the other Schmidt, whose first name I can't pronounce because it's like a lot of letters. It's like Volodymyr, but like the Polish way. I don't even know what it is. We also drew quickly. But it's a different GM Schmidt. Yeah. Who's the French uh, group that sounds like they're German? They do that terrible music like Kraftwerk. What was that called? What's the group I'm thinking of? Wait. Somebody has to know. Wait, say it again. There's a French group that everybody thinks is German. Because they oh. do that terrible techno music. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're no Daft Punk. That's it. Mm -hmm. That sounds German, right? Mm -hmm. But they're French. Confusing the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, who's worst? Daft Punk, Rammstein, or Kraftwerk? Wh which group is the worst? Discuss, please. What do you think? They're all equally terrible? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> so I have to go soon. I wonder... I guess I'll watch this first game and then head it on home. <laughs> They're just saying that those groups are excellent. So, <laughs> craft work by orders of magnitude is what worse. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, that's who I mean. That guy. Yeah, I played him. Oh. I lost on chime trying to write his first name. I was even close to his second name. I gave up. Yeah, we drew pretty quickly. Actually, actually. Daft Punk is rubbish. Barbara Streisand, Pet Shop Boys. Yeah. I love those groups so much. What? Boo. Jay Possum. Yeah. <laughs> they made fun on Family Guy. They were showing Daft Punk, and they were just doing some nonsense. The guy says, says, what key are we supposed to be playing in? The guy said, no. There won't be any of that anymore. <laughs> that is a good scene. Okay, so Bronstein's white, Ullman's black. This game was played, I think, in 19 Dickety. See, the, the, the Kaiser stole their word for 20. How come whichever one I push doesn't work? Oh, because it's over there. 500 cent to deuce from Cookie Munster. Hooray. Did I already have a train and then like it just died a level one? Is that what happened? I think that's what happened. Okay, I'm going to grab my phone and I'll be right back. Yeah. Now let me see when this game was played. 1977 in Tallinn in the Karas Memorial. So it was played in Estonia. All right. Hooray for everybody. Phil Collins is the worst? That's correct. Yeah. Um, that's right. It was the first step to... Okay, so it's a French defense. And they played a win a war. This is the way I used to play for black. I, I'd play C5, but they, they transposed to what I do. Okay, queen G4. So nowadays... Since the 1990s, everybody castles. And I've had this position with black several times when I was a teen and a tween, and I've, I've never castled. I always played queen c7. And I think when I learned the French defense, like Ullmann's games were the games that you looked at, and this game was played in 77, and probably between like 77 and 1990, I played the French whenever I could. And then around the late 80s, early 90s, I started transforming to the Sicilian. 
Okay, so I've had this position too. Okay, and this is a known, still still being played. Knight e2, because otherwise queen c3 is good. Bond Cloud Enthusiast subscribed. Good, good. Okay, knight c6. And then that threatens the pawn on e5. Now, Karen, if you take this pawn, see? Mm -hmm. Right, now watch this flurry of tactics. All right. Knight takes d4. Mm -hmm. Then if you take it, which is bad, queen c3 forks everything. Mm -hmm. I even saw that. Yeah, so he didn't do that. Okay, now if you don't do that, because, you know, what I said, now your e-pawn's hanging a lot. Mm -hmm. So he played f4. Okay, then he played bishop d7, back here, and takes. And I've, I've had this position, but it was before you were born. I used to play the French, and I, I wouldn't have played this move order, but I would have had this position. Now, uh, one of the advantages white has in this position, other than the two bishops, is he's got this past h pawn, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got two bishops, he's got a past h pawn, and this pawn's gonna fall. You know, you could take it either way. Yeah. Okay. Nowadays, I think they take it, but Bronstein played h4, which is also good. Okay, long castle, and he kept putting it in h. Okay, also good. Knife f5. See, they're still playing the way I said. And then he kept, he kept doing it, h6. And the engine says it's about equal or white slightly better, so. Okay, now here Black played the only good move according to the engine. He played rook g6. Now the thing is, if I play h7, you can't move your rook vertically because I'll queen. But if you move your rook horizontal, then g4 is annoying. So rook g6 takes care of that. This rook can go here, and we're stopping g4. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll take up the palm while we're at it. Yeah. Okay, h7, the engine agrees. Rook h8 is forced. And the engine still says white's a little bit better or equal. Okay, now the engine wants to take this pawn, because, you know, why not? But he played rook h3. And what would Quinsuela say about that move? No, no. No, right, yeah. Yeah, that, that's not good. Okay, now Ulman protected his pawn, d4. See, that looks good, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Good night, Nara. Whoops, that, that wasn't played. That was a typo. Okay, now strangely... This has equal material. Nobody's ahead. And both sides stand badly. Okay, now he played rook b1 because his rook's better on b1 than a1. Does that make sense? Bishop e8, typical French maneuver. He, he wants to get the bishop out of the way of his queen, and he can play f6 attacking this and take the h pawn and the bishop here and Papa John's. Mm -hmm. Okay, queen f3. He wants to play g4 as I... Oops, as I previously stated. Okay, and then he played queen d8, x-clam. Now he's defending the h4 square. And more importantly, he's setting up for the next game. Okay, g4, because that's, you got to play g4, knight h4 attacking the queen. You see how this is defended now. Queen h1, engine recommended. Now we get our choice of pawns. If you take either pawn, you have the advantage. But taking this pawn's better, because this pawn's, you know, I'm just gonna take that next move. Mm -hmm. Okay, knight g3, engine doesn't like that either. Yum, chomp, chomp, chomp. So this is an example of a double-edged kind of position where you do something and either it works or it doesn't. So a lot of times in chess, especially nowadays, People don't do very much. When I say people, I mean the top players in the world. They make very incremental changes in the position. And whether they're right and they're wrong or they're wrong, the engine doesn't care very much. It says it's about equal. But Bronstein was an uncompromising player. So he played h4, h5, h6, h7. And then if the pawn queens or the pawn stays there for 10 moves and black's like, ah, this stupid pawn, then white might have a good position. Instead, it was overextended. Knight went to h4 blocking the rook. He took the g pawn and the h pawn, so white just lost. So white did not take this pawn, which he could have, mm -hmm. and instead lost these two pawns. Now, I have an excuse. 1977, if you thought Ullmann was old, Bronstein was much older. Okay, Bronstein was at his peak between like 
1952 and 1972, somewhere in there. And 72 is already getting pretty old. 77, that's crazy. That's why I beat Bronstein, because I beat him like in 89. So he was you know, old school then. Right. Okay. So Bronstein was way past his prime in 77. And Ullman was probably, how many years ago is that? 43? 33? It's got to be 43, right? Right. And he's, so, he was, so he was like 42 years old when he played this game. Uh, Ulman. So, all right. That's, you know, not so bad. Okay, 94. And now he played the engine move again. Again. Okay, now you see this bishop on e8? He'd like to take his own knight. And then he's got that action, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he played knight takes e5, confusing the audience. Okay, now this gets super tricky. What he could have played, which would be very scary, okay, he could have played knight d6 check. Mm -hmm. Then if you take it, queen b7 check. Isn't that scary? But you just go here and you're like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it looks scary, right? Looks mm -hmm. like, oh, no. Okay, and then it says black's winning because there's no mate. Okay, and after knight takes, the idea is he wants to play bishop c6. Now, in this position, even though black is up two pawns, Okay, six pawns to four. If white plays knight d6 check, white's going to be winning because white's got this rook and this knight. And you can't defend d6 too easily. You can't play knight f5 because your rook's hanging. So actually, knight takes here is by far the best move. Like, by far. And then after it takes, he plays bishop c6. And now he's got this action going on. So now his b pawn is safe. And this is like, and then you can't really escape that pin. Now, if he plays knight d6 check, which he did not do, okay? Black has one winning move here, and black has four legal moves. One of them wins, and the other three incredibly lose. See, chess is hard. Mm -hmm. What's the winning move for black? You got four legal moves. One, two, three, four. Um. Now, Bronstein didn't play knight d6, but if he did, he would have forced a reckoning. There's a hole on d6, and no matter how much he kills and how much he maims and how much he attacks, he can never fill that hole. He's looking for a reckoning. What movie? Um, Tombstone. Somebody said always play king b8, but then after queen c6, you will know Bronstein's yeah. name is the lord. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was it. But, um, I showed this position uh, when, before I met you, uh, I gave chess lessons to the Eagles, the group, mm -hmm. and I showed them this position, and they, they got it like that. Easy. That's right, Desperado. Queen. Why don't you come to your set? That's the only move that wins. If you if you move your king, you're dead, lost, mm -hmm. dead, 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 dead. You're dead. Let me give you an example. King c7. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bam! Oh snap! You like that X-ray? No. This is the only legal move, mm -hmm. and then mate. That's harsh, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Queen takes is correct. Yeah. That's the only winning move. Right. Then you take the queen. You take the queen. Okay, so white's down a lot of pawns. And if you take this, setting up for the next game, then knife f3 check. The king has to get out of the knife. Then we take the rook. You take this. And we double up on the bubble up. Mm -hmm. And black's winning. Okay. So he didn't play knight d6. He played bishop d3 defending his knight. So white's up a piece. Although black has a lot of pawns. The knight is pinned. These pieces are good. This pawn's weak. This king's no good, etc. King c7. The engine says moving the king is correct. Because then there's no knight d6 check later. 
Okay, so that's a good move. And yeah, Black's completely winning because he's got all his pieces attacking. And then, blah, blah, come on, what's wrong with you? Bishop f4, takes the rook, takes the rook, takes the bishop. Now material's equal piecewise, but Black has three extra pawns. And Black's threading discovered check. Attacks the rook. Now, if you move the knight, then I have queen takes rook. Mm -hmm. Except if black plays what knight move? Making queen takes rook illegal. Knight d5. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you can see what the engine says. Mm -hmm. So he resigned. So you can see Ullman was a world-class player beating Bronstein pretty handily with black in 30 moves. And basically the last 10 moves completely winning although obviously very tricky. And I would argue, and nobody agrees with me, I know nobody agrees with me because I see a game after game after game, is when you're playing somebody, you should have some idea what they're good at and don't let them do that. So Ullmann's good at the French defense, this particular variation, and Bronstein's like, okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> just play another opening and then Ullmann's like this isn't the French defense what's going on but they have too much pride he was good but he's never going to be champion how many good years did Bronstein have two so you can't let pride mess with you like that F pride but at least he what? wasn't a wimp I'm quoting a movie know. what movie I don't know ugh oh. Did anybody point it out what movie I was quoting? No? Hey, Terrible. Scottish Demon Goat. You guys missed the Pulp Fiction reference. Oh. No. That's when Ving Rhames is explaining to Bruce Willis how he has to throw the fight. No. And he says, like, you were good, but, you know, how many fights you got left? Two? If you were that good, you've already been champion. Mm -hmm. And then he says, now, the night before the fight, you're going to feel something. Pride. F pride. <laughs> he says, pride doesn't hurt. help. It only hurts. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Pulp Fiction. Pride, only, pride only hurts. That's right. Hey, Paul Drinkwater. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to run home. You should drive. And then I'll get back on the stream. I have to mm -hmm. work with Holden on some college stuff. Mm -hmm. so. The stream's almost over. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave the stream in the middle of it to protest. So here's what happened. Yeah. You've heard of TNT, the television station. Mm -hmm. And you've heard of Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal and then Kenny. And Ken, you never heard of him. And then the other guy. I've heard of Kenny. Anyway, it doesn't matter. To, to, yeah, 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 yeah. So today, the basketball player who's not good, not, not Barkley and Shaq, yeah. he said, I'm a black man, and I'm a former professional basketball player. Like, I'm not doing this. And he took all his stuff off and walked away. Oh, he did? Yeah, he well, on live TV. I, he took off his, like, the thing where, you know, like, and then he was talking a little with it off, so you couldn't really hear him too well. Wow. And then... The tall white guy who's eight feet tall, but not the basketball player. He yeah. said, like, I agree. Good job. And then Charles and Shaq didn't know what to do, so they just sat there. <laughs> Usually they got something to say. They had nothing to say. Yeah. Then they went to Chris Weber later in the booth, and Chris Weber was, like, crying and talking, and everybody's crying. Aww. So, yeah. Now, Chris Weber played for which team in college? I'm not going to know. I'm raising my hands, so that's how you know. University of Alabama. Oh, am I from Alabama? Michigan. I am. Michigan. Right. I said basketball. Alabama was play basketball. And then the most famous thing Chris Weber ever did was in the NCAA finals with no time left, like seven seconds left. Mm -hmm. He called timeout with no timeouts left. So then the other team got the ball and we lost. Mm -hmm. That's what he's known for in college. Yeah. It was a now you got I know. now you guys don't know this. That's thanks, Raj. Raj. You know, thanks, Raj. You guys don't know this. Chris Weber's hands are really big. And he was told by the team, by the, the he said, you can't high-five anybody anymore. You're hurting them. <laughs> yeah, his, I mean, his hands are really big. No, I'm serious. I know. He's not allowed to high-five. Too big. There's a laugh, and I was thinking about the lawyer in the court scene. Don't look. Don't look. <laughs> don't look. Don't look. Yeah, Weber was a great NBA player. Yeah. Fab Five is correct. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'm going to go because I have to get home. But um, Robert Horry played for See, there's an Alabama. Thank you, C.L. Mm -hmm. Smith.
backing me up there. You're back. Wait, who are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> she th she threatens to leave, but she doesn't no, because I... the threat is strong. Oh, yeah. Bye, kangaroo. Well, I was looking at uh, it's hard to leave. I like to say bye to people. Bye, Pam. So you got people. <laughs> Well, wait, who is that lady? That's that's no lady. That's my wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, bye. I really am going. Ooh, I believe you. Plus, I have to work on this day. Oh, yeah, that's so. that's going to something. Okay, now the next game we show will be his game against Bobby's Fisher. Okay, also a win -war, but a longer game. Uh, let's see. View, copy, making copies. I was born in 1987. Um, let's see. What am I doing? All right. For those of you who showed up late or you were, you know, you were not in a position to understand what's happening, say no to drugs. Uh, Wolfgang Ullmann, the East German slash German Grandmaster, passed away two days ago. At the age of 85. And there's there's no number there that was even close to nine. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. All right, so this is the game he played Fisher. Let's see what year it was. Uh, let's see. 1960. God damn. Buenos Aires in Argentina. I've never been to Argentina. Wow. Well, a German in Argentina. I mean, it's getting scary over here, these games. Well, I'm sure they've played more than once, but I think this is the only game Ullmann beat Fischer, but I could be wrong. Might have beaten him some other game. Okay, so they played the Winowar again. And what's funny is uh, later in his career, Fischer started playing A3 here, as in the game Fischer Feingold. And even Spencer's played this move. But, okay, he played the main line first. This is the same as the last game. Okay, the Bronstein game, Bronstein played queen g4. Fisher played more positional style with a4 because he wants to get his bishop to a3. He doesn't want the black bishop or the black queen to go to a4. Okay, and they develop their pieces. And here... Uh, Fisher played queen d2, which is a hard move to understand. It's not a move I would even consider. Okay, queen a5 is okay. Bishop d3. Normally, it makes no sense for black to play c4 because then he doesn't have counterplay against white center. But Ullmann's in it anyway because he immediately opened up the center with f6. Now, this was 1960, and since I was born in 1969 my rules were not very well known yet. Right, right, sweetie? Yeah. Karen agrees. All right. Now, white's development is a bit suspicious. Black has all his pieces developed. He can castle either way. He's attacking the center. And Fisher put his bishop on a3, which was the idea behind a4, obviously. Um... Ullmann played knight g6, really forcing the issue here. And Fisher realized if white, black opened the center up by winning a pawn, that would be to his detriment because his king is here and the queen would have lots of good squares and the bishop pair. So Fisher's like, yeah, yeah, take my e-pawn. Ooh, I'm scared. Okay. And then it turned out Fisher bit off more than he could chew because Ullmann's response was, we Germans aren't all smiles and sunshine. So, okay, so Ullmann castle queenside, which is correct. Because we're, we're not going to castle kingside for obvious reasons. And we don't want to open the center up with our, with our king there. Okay, and the engine likes white. The engine says white's doing great. Knight CE7. Now, remember when I used to play the French a lot, I made a lot of knight moves. I remember that. Okay, now the bishop is open. The knight's going to f5, also known as f5. It wasn't known as f5 then, but later it would be known as f5. Okay, now Fisher didn't like knight f5. Um, so he played a very unusual move. The engine just wants to play rook here and says white's better. 
But Fisher played knight h4, confusing the audience. It's not a bad move. Obviously, if you take the knight, then bishop takes, wins the other knight, and has a fork. So Ullman can't do that. If knight f5, I can take it. And so and Fisher could play f4 later. So knight, knight h4 is a pretty interesting move. Okay, he played rook d e8, defending his knight. So now he can play knight h4 if, if possible. Knight takes, pawn takes, opening the h file, put it in h. And he took on f6, which the engine does not like very much. Undoubling black's pawns, getting rid of this nice center pawn here. He played h3. The engine still says white's better because white has the two bishops. Knife f5. The bishop gets tucked away. G5. So both sides can attack each other's king with the opposite side castling, although the center is pretty closed. And again, the engine prefers white. White has the two bishops. And after f4, the engine no longer prefers white. Now, the problem with f4 is it gives up the e4 square. So if my knight goes to e4, you can't kick my knight out. And also, I can't play knight d6 here because it's, it's hanging. But after f4, it's not. So f4 is a, not a good move. Knight d6. And Fisher should definitely take on g5 here, allowing knight e4. But instead, he played bishop f3, which is another mistake. And now Ulman made an excellent move. And in fact, if Ulman doesn't make this move, he's clearly worse. And by making this move, the engine says that he has an equal position. It's a very tough position. White has the two bishops. White's king is pretty safe. The bishop on d7 still isn't very good. Do you guys see the, the excellent move here that Ulman played? I don't think in a tournament game I would I would play this move. It just I couldn't I wouldn't find it. Yeah. Not only would I not find it, the audience also doesn't find it. Okay, hey Wilbur, the ultimate potser. Vaxby, they got their engines up. G4 is correct. And the point is, you want to block this bishop. This bishop is an excellent bishop, unless the pawn's on f4 the whole game, then it's not so excellent. 1,000 cent to dues. Thanks, Nicola. Nicola, you're the best until somebody donates more. Okay, so the point is, if this pawn's here forever, that bishop's not very good. But if he takes on g5, it's pretty good. Okay, so he played g4, and you could take either way. If you take with the bishop, I'll play knight e4 attacking your queen, f5 attacking your bishop, I cement my knight, and your bishop's no good. So he took with a pawn, the engine agrees. And here, he made sure the bishop was trapped. The engine actually thinks knight e4, bishop c6 are good, but he played f5. And he gave Fisher a passed pawn, but he sort of killed his bishop and he got the, the e4 square. So the position's about equal. Okay, rook e7, he wants to double up on the bubble up. Bishop to g3. And just like in the game with Bronstein, Ullmann plays bishop e8. Blocking this pawn, trading the bishop, getting e4, blockading. And he did that in his last game, trying to activate his bishop as well. Knight e4, bishop e4, d e4. You don't want to take with the f pawn, because then you allow f5 and the bishop gets opened up. You want to keep this bishop trapped forever. Okay, now the engine says this is about equal. It's opposite bishops. White's a pawn up. White has double pawns everywhere, isolated pawns. Black has a passed e pawn. So white's slightly better because white has an extra pawn. King f2, that's reasonable. Double up on the bubble up. Rook fb1 is reasonable. Queen d5. And to my eyes, this game should be a draw. Like, everything's sort of blocked. Nobody has a really clear plan to win. But these are uncompromising players. Raj B, $20. Hooray. Good for a few lectures. A dollar a lecture for 20 lectures. That's right. 
Okay, now he played queen c1, and the engine doesn't like that move. It, and it says now the position's equal, and not only is it equal, uh, Ulaman found the right move. Now you have to realize when you're playing chess, especially at this level, you want to predict what your opponent's going to do. Obviously, the point of queen c1 was to get all his heavy pieces on the b file, get his queen on this diagonal, try to infiltrate if it's possible, and blockade the e-pawn with king e3. Then black can't do anything on the king side or center, and white's ready to play on the b-file and on this diagonal. Okay, And because there's so many pawns on the board and not very many open files, Ulaman correctly played rook h1, trading off his rooks for the queen, and actually the engine doesn't take the queen and says that's a mistake. The engine plays here, and obviously, if you're a human, and you see after rook h1, you can take it, and you play queen c1, you're not going to let him play rook h1, then move your queen away. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you play queen c1, then when the guy infiltrates, just move your queen away? Well, then you wouldn't have played queen c1. However, if you were like, well, rook h1, I'll just take it. Two rooks is better than a queen. So that's what he did, and the engine says that's the losing move. Now, there's a famous game that's for another lecture that Fisher beat Portish with the black pieces. I think it was a Nimzo Indian, I'm not sure. Where Fisher gives up his two rooks for a queen and his queen is too strong. Reminds me of this, actually. E3 check, double X clam. Former muscle. So this is a very good Zwish and Zug. If you're going to play E3 check, you want to play it now. Because if the king's going to go back and defend this pawn and not let the queen infiltrate, you don't want his rook to be here to infiltrate on the h file. So if he doesn't take the pawn, he's going to have to take with the king. He can't play king f1, king e1. And if he does take with the king, we're going to get this queen check in, and then we're going to take everything. So you can't defend both pawns, and we're going to take one with check, and we're just going to keep taking things, and black's winning. The engine says plus six. So after e3, you have to move your king. And obviously, white wants to have his rook here, not his king. Okay, and then e2. And this pawn's not dangerous, obviously. This pawn is on the seventh rank. The bishop can't move. This bishop has a nice diagonal here, has a nice diagonal here. These pawns are weak. White doesn't have any counterplay. White has two rooks. Rooks are good when they're active. If white's rooks were here on the, the squares that I'm shading, okay, then maybe white's doing well. But white's rooks are like stopping this pawn and defending these pawns. Terrible. So actually white's just losing here. Okay, now here Fisher went totally nuts. He said, well, if I just play normal moves, I'm going to lose which the engine agrees with. So he played the crazy rook b5. He said, well, if my rook goes here, that's pretty good. And if he takes it, now his bishop isn't stopping my pawn, so I have counterplay. If his queen starts running around, I'll just make a queen. And I'm, maybe I'll take this. My king can come in because you can't play bishop c6 and mate me. So that's what Fisher was thinking. And the engine says, no, man, that, no. Okay, Ulman took this. Now Ulman has a passed E pawn and a passed A pawn. God damn. Then he pushes his A pawn. Pretty good A pawn. Pretty, pretty good. B6, stopping rook A5. And back in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and this game was played in 1960, a lot of chess games that you'll look at end around a move 40 because normally the time control was 40 moves in either two hours or two and a half hours. Then you got more time. So when the time trouble was over, people looked and went, oh, and then they resigned. This was move 42. Well... Fisher didn't resign after move 40 because he only has one legal move. He has to stop queen. And then here, 
he can't defend his pawn, so he figured he'll take the other pawn, and he realizes if he takes the other pawn, he resigned instead. Then queen h5, you have to play g3. There's no other move. And then every move wins, queen f3. The engine plays king b7. And these, these pawns are all just hanging. And then there's, there's more passed pawns. And the engine says like plus eight. 200 cents to do is two bishops what else? So in this position, after queen g6, Fisher resigned. The engine says black is plus six, plus seven. So that was an up and down game. And in time trouble, in a position that was relatively equal, Fisher made two bad moves in a row. Queen c1, queen takes rook, underestimating e3 check. But I think the game was turning when Ullmann played g4, blocking this dark squared bishop. And as you can see, that bishop never got to anywhere good. I mean, he worked really hard, too, to get the bishop to a nice diagonal. Then when he played f4, blocking his bishop, he never got out. And again, Ullmann understood the knight maneuvers and the bishop maneuvers that you play in the French defense. He plays a lot of French defense. He's known for that. So he had a good idea, good understanding of the position. Fisher, on the other hand, was 16, 17 years old. So not a lot of experience. Frankly, terrible. Um, right, Fisher is teens. Yeah, This is before Fisher played my dad. They did have adjournments back then. It's possible, it's possible the game was adjourned and Fisher's like, oh, well, I guess after here, here I resign. That's possible, yeah. They did have adjournments, I, I, I must admit. Okay, the next game is against Uri Geller, I mean Ephem Geller. Now you guys don't get that joke anyway. Um, this was played in Amsterdam in 1970. So these guys were both really good in 1970. God damn. Yeah, Geller and, and Ullmann were definitely both top 20 in the world in 1970. Let's see. So this is 50 years ago. So Ulman was 35. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, that's right. No spoon instead of a fork. That's right. Yeah. Hikaru said Fisher. Nah, he, even Hikaru didn't say that. Yeah. Okay, so they played a French, obviously. And Geller played the Tarish. And what's funny is, nowadays... The line that was the most popular in the 60s and 70s is like never played today. So nowadays, they play knight f6, e5, knight d7, or they play c5 and queen takes d5. And some guys are even playing a6 and h6 and knight c6 and bishop e7. But c5 and e d5, this is the old way of playing. And this is the way I used to play when I played the French. Then I started playing the Guillemar with knight c6 instead. And a lot of the uh, karpov korshnoi games from the World Championship matches in 78 and 81, we saw this kind of position. And this is just nobody plays as the black anymore. They're playing queen d5 or they're playing knight f6 on move three or something else. Okay, so usually we get an isolated pawn position, which we did this game. Okay, and black has a nice bishop, black has development, this bishop has squares, and black has an isolated pawn that's blockaded. So obviously, Karpov really liked to have white in these positions, and Korshnoi thought it was fine, as did Ullmann. Langerine subscribed, or I'm sorry, he gifted a sub to Cookie Munster. I wonder if the Munster is in Germany. Okay. Man, that joke was pretty cheesy. All right, back to the game. Now, as you know, f6 is always a bad move. Never play f6. So Geller played bishop g5 and dared his opponents to play f6. The engine actually plays queen b6, but Ullmann played f6. And then he played the move knight e5. So he's going to play bishop g4, and he's got really active pieces. Rook e1. 
Always play bishop f1. Put it in h. Getting off of this dangerous diagonal. Put it in h. h3, stopping bishop g4. Fine. So white has this nice small advantage here. Okay. Now, the problem that low-rated players have, <clears throat> which super grandmasters generally don't have, was shown in this position. If Karpov was white, Karpov would have put Ulman asleep. They used the analog clock, obviously, before digital clocks. He would have turned Ulman's clock and won on time. That's how Karpov did it. Put his opponents to sleep, and then he wins on time. And Geller was a much more forceful, aggressive, do-something kind of player, especially in positions where you didn't have to do anything. So the engine just makes a random legal move for white and says white's better. White has the blockade. The d5 pawn is isolated. White's position's excellent. Instead, Geller, you know, forced a reckoning like in Tombstone, and that, that didn't work out for him. He played knight takes e5, which the engine does not like, and then knight f3, he thought he'd put pressure on these pawns, but I mean, those pawns are defended, so I, I don't know. So that was a very poor decision, very poor. Okay, I would play rook f8, which is the engine move, but he played h6, which stops knight g5, stops bishop g5. Rook c6, he's doing a rook lift. His queen will have extra squares here in case of bishop b6. The engine's not a big fan of rook c6 because it's a weird move. Wow, the engine actually sacks the exchange here. Go engine. Always sack the exchange. It says black's better after the exchange sack. God damn. Queen b8. Black's obviously also better here. And rook c1 is a terrible move. He really needed to play c4 right away and bust this up. Rook f8, c4 now. Too late, e4. Black's ready to go. So Geller's idea was to give Black this nice center and then attack the center and the center is blown up, but that didn't work. What he should have done is just left the isolated pawn there and slowly played positional chess, which wasn't really his forte. Now the problem with knight d4, and knight d4 is the best move, is bishop check, and my rook has all these nice squares to go to to continue the attack. So Geller played knight d2, hoping to take all of these pawns and destroy the center. And here Black played an excellent move. I'll give you a hint. In Petrosian style, Gangnam style, not around in 1970, but Petrosian style. What move did Black play here? Man, you were two-thirds right, Scottish. Man Moth is correct. Okay, the F-pawn is very tender. Tender is the F-pawn. But it's defended by the bishop. Not anymore. And then bishop c5. God damn. And if that's not enough pressure, the queen's coming to g3. And e3 and, and Papa John's. Yeah. And already black is winning. Very passive position for white. Very aggressive for black. And black has the two bishops and he has the vatals. Okay, rookie two is forced. And Ullmann, I didn't know what he said because it was in German, but I had a friend of mine translated. It might have been kangaroo. And Ullmann in this position said, you will know my name is the Lord. Okay, now actually... Ulman's move is not the best. E3 is the best. And then after F takes E3, knife F5 with tremendous pressure. And the engine says black is winning. But Ulman's move is much cooler, so he gets kudos for that. Rook takes F2. Okay, also a good move. Not as strong as E3, but just as effective in a practical game. And Ulman, for the first, this is the first time this ever happened, he said, I got two rooks, one for each of you. So he sacrificed his rook on b6, sacrificed his rook on b2. Now, shocking, the engine prefers the move c takes d5 with the idea of rook takes c5 if there's some discovered, you know, kind of thing here. 
then bishop takes b6 is the best move, Papa John's. Instead, he played rook f2, the human move, and then e3. e3 is an amazing move. So actually, in this position, black has one bishop for two rooks, as in the famous Cavavalanche game. Very famous. And the engine prefers black here because black has the two bishops and black has the Vatels. Amazing game from Ullmann. It makes you proud to be East German. Yeah. I mean, black just had this wall of pawn. All right. C takes D5. The engine doesn't like that move. King H1. Knife F5. God damn. The bishop's hanging, but there's a, there's a checkmate coming. Checkmate. Queen H. Checkmate. Checkmate everywhere. Okay, so we have to stop knight g3 check. And here he blundered. After rook c3, the engine says black is plus two. So black's winning, but it's close. By the way, how does Ulman always have a pass pawn in the seventh rank? What is this? Ulman? Like, okay. So he played knight e4. That's a mistake. And Ulman is now plus 10. Which move for black is plus 10 here? Let's see if you can find it in the chat whilst I have some more Perrier. And Mr. Geller tear down this wall. What's the winning move for Ulman? Queen g3, confusing the audience. Well, it confuses me. I don't know, Queen g3 like allows rook takes c5. I don't know about that move. Carol, terrible. It's the random legal move brigade. They've invaded. I'm going to recommend all you guys to pog champs. Anybody? No? Terrible. Okay, well... You'd like the knight to move, so knight g3 check wins, or you'd like the knight to be captured. Still nobody has the right move. Yeah, there we go. Foo's chest got it. All right, somebody got their engine working. Queen, bishop takes b6. Oh, he actually played bishop takes b6, but he missed queen f4. I thought he played the right move, and he didn't. Queen f4 attacking the knight, and you can't defend the knight. Now, here's what I mean. If you defend the knight, I can still take it. So you got to watch it. Okay? Although I don't see how you defend the knight. If you play, let's say, queen f3, you're hanging your rook. So if you want to defend the knight and defend the rook, you got rook c4 and queen c2. So queen c2, bishop to d6, threatening mate. You can't take the bishop because of this other mate. So resigns. And if rook c4, it's the same thing. This is mate. You can't take because you get mated. For those of you who don't see the mate, that's the mate. So queen f4 was double exclam because you can't move, you can't move the knight because of this mate, but I'm going to take the knight or I'm going to play bishop d6 and mate you. So after queen f4, the game's over. But he played bishop takes b6. And that's a blunder. Now black is better, but not winning. Queen f4, too difficult to find when your knight's hanging by two, bishop's hanging by two pieces. He just took back. Now it's possible Ulman saw queen f4, but he knew 50 years later they would know if he played it, he was using an engine. So he's like, I'm just going to play bishop b6 and I'll win eventually. Queen f4, that would have been a crushing move. Crushing. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is, after queen f4, I'm going to play bishop d6 and mate you. And if you take my bishop, I'm going to mate you. Yeah, the king the king is not good. That's not a, not a good king. Boo. Okay, bishop b6. He played queen f3. Queen f5 is the only move. Now he blundered. He should have played knight takes f2. And the engine says white can draw. But he played bishop d3. Queen takes d5. And that, that pawn is just too strong. Too strong. 
Knight c5, also a bad move. Takes, takes, takes. And this is just, this is an easy win. You have to take the bishop. Knight e3. Probably Geller missed knight e3. Because if knight g3, I can just play king here. After knight e3, you can't play king here. And I can build. I can play bishop here. I can take. I can play bishop b5. Man, that f-pawn is really strong. Rook c1. King g8. God damn. King g 8 the engine move. Okay, and he wants to play bishop b5 winning, but rook c8 is going to be mate. So he plays king g8, then he'll play bishop b5. A very good prophylactic move. Excellent. And that's what he did. And two pieces for a rook, and he just mops it up. This ending could have happened in Carlson Nakamura. Uh, Nakamura could have traded queens in one of their games and got this exact end game. Bishop knight and a pawn versus rook with a couple pawns on the king's side. Nakamura didn't like that ending because he would have had the rook. So he just did something else and lost quicker. And after rook b7, it says he resigned. So this is actually very funny. Um, he might have resigned because I could just push. But he might have resigned, as somebody pointed out, maybe the game was adjourned. And then he was like, all right, ridiculous. But, but obviously, a3, a2, a1 is winning. If you take the bishop, you can't, you, you can't stop the pawn. So, yeah. So after rook b7, he resigned. So very sharp game, one that you would expect Geller would be better at than Ullmann. Geller was really good at these really sharp tactical positions, but not, not that game. What's funny about that game is Geller's advantage was his positional advantage against the isolated deep pawn, but he wasn't patient enough and he made it all tactical. The tactics didn't work out. And that would have been an amazing game if instead of winning this end game, in boring fashion, he had found the move queen f4. That, that would have been better. Yeah, if he had played queen f4 here with the idea of bishop d6 and queen h2 mate, that would have been amazing. So after rook takes c5, queen takes e4, probably that's what would have happened. Uh, now we're threatening knight g3, queen e1, queen f4. And the engine says it's plus a thousand. It says there's nothing to do about all those threats. So just a misjudgment by both players, but Queen F4 would have won immediately. And then he won the game again. So too bad. Uh King G8. What after King G3? King G8, exclam. Does Ulman play Morphe style? No, these are just his best games. If you look at my best games, I played well too. If you look at my worst games, then you're like, God damn, we go watch the Botez stream. Terrible. All right. The next game was very short. Also a French defense. It was against Velomirovich. It was not a Velomirovich attack because it wasn't a Sicilian. This was played in 1976 in the Skopje Olympiad. And I have a funny story about that Olympiad. I had a student in Michigan who's a 1700 player who when he was younger was a 1900 player. He's, he's a lot older than I am. And he was at this Olympiad. He was like uh, in, the, in the US Armed Forces. And he was like, hey, I'm going to go watch that Olympiad. And he saw the Fisher and all those guys. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. In 76, he wouldn't have seen Fisher. When did he see Fisher? 68? The Olympia was in Skopje more, more than... Wait a minute. Now I'm getting confused. I placed it together with sugar packets. Oh, I don't think this was an Olympiad. This was just a tournament in Skopje. Okay, that's what it was. I'm confusing a tournament that was an Olympia with another tournament. This was another tournament. This was in 76. So Ulman's already getting long in the tooth here. Right? He's already in his 40s. Terrible. 
ZS Cool gifted five subs. Hooray. Isn't every stream a Fall Guys streamer now except mine? Aren't all of them Fall Guys? It's Karen. No, who's leaving? Nobody can leave. Hey, everybody. Okay, so it was a French defense. And what's funny about this is, is not only did Ulman win in 21 moves, it was an exchange French. It's like I have the white pieces by transposition. This isn't the kind of game you think Black would win in 20 moves. It's the boring world of Niels Bohr. Capture Bishop D3, he takes. Good. Getting a tempo. Puts the knight on D5. Yeah, this is just white's very slightly better. Knight E5 is fine. Bishop E6. Bishop G5 looks good. Rook E8 looks good. Rook E1 looks good. Queen A5 is okay. Queen F3. Yeah, this looks like a position... I could have either white or black, and I would normally prefer to be white because I usually like having the isolated pawn because it helps me get some squares in my opponent's position. See here, black's all solid and defending, and white's intentions are, are, are more aggressive. And the engine says it's equal because it's equal. Okay, now Ulman plays an aggressive bishop b4. And this position, the engine says white's better by playing the paradoxical bishop takes d5, a move I would not play. He played knight takes d5, which is risky because the rook isn't defended. But you got to risk it to get the biscuit. Now, I've said this many times when I'm doing commentary. In the Super GM games, often they start out very boring and they get exciting later. Or... They start out very exciting, and they peter out to a draw. And the reason is, when they start out very exciting, it's only exciting for you. It's just prep for them. They're not going to play exciting the first 15 moves unless they've analyzed it all the way to the end. And they analyze it to a draw, then they both play it. So this was really boring, exchange French. The engine said it was equal. Then all heck broke loose. So everything is hanging. Okay, you take whatever you want. So he took the bishop. Queen takes. And once again, this is all zeros. And white has one move that keeps the equality. It's a very difficult move to find. And not only did he not find it, he played a move that lost the game immediately. Terrible. Let's see. Yeah. What's funny is, even though I make lots of references and I seem pretty hip and cool, there's a lot of things that are very popular that I know zero about. When I say zero, you don't understand. If, if there's a baby being born right now, that's how much I know about the subject. Okay. There's television shows, which a lot of you guys have watched and you talk about. I've never seen one second of them and know nothing about them. There's a lot of shows like that. And all the things on Twitch that I don't play, I know zero. I don't know what Fortnite is. I know the word Fortnite. If I was watching Fortnite and you didn't tell me I was watching Fortnite, I wouldn't know what I was watching. I don't know what Fortnite is. I know it's a game on Twitch. And when I say it's on Twitch, it's not on Twitch, but... And the other games like that, I don't know nothing. Fall, Fall Boys or Fall Out Boys or Fall Guy, whatever, I don't know what that is either. I, I know it exists, but I don't know what it is. All right. What we could do is have, have the, the Fall Out Boys, fall, fall Guy, Take the Fall, Autumn. We could have somebody playing that game and somebody playing Fortnite, and I have to figure out which one's which. That would be funny. You could even have the words on, and I still wouldn't know, because they both start with F, so I don't know. Mm. Okay. Now, in this position, White should play rookie three, saving his rook, 
because, you know, the bishop can take it. And then if you take the queen, I have several ways I can take. You know, I'm safe. Instead, he made a, a blund blundered. Okay. Even queen takes queen is bad because I take with the knight. I'm threatening the rook. I'm threatening f6 win a piece. You have to take. I take. And then the engine says this is very bad for white. Obviously, that's no good, that pawn. I can kick the knight out, walk my king up, and you're probably going to lose this pawn. That's a very bad endgame. Okay, so instead, white played the super aggressive bishop takes f6, which actually loses the game immediately. It's a very bad blunder. And black just takes back. And he says, whatever. It was the first time that was said. 1976. Okay, so the rook's hanging, the knight's hanging, and you, you got nothing. If you check me, I just move my king, and then your knight's hanging, your rook's hanging. You got nothing. If you take this, I take back, and your knight's hanging, your rook's hanging. So, so you play queen f6. And... Probably he thought this would be a draw. Bishop takes e1, queen g5 check, and that is a draw. Obviously, king h8, queen check is a draw. And if black tries to win, obviously king g8 is a repetition. With king e7, now white's winning. White's down in exchange, but he's just crushing black. Black's king is on e7, and it can't move. So here, actually, black is completely lost. So probably Velimirovich thought that's what was going to happen. But instead of bishop takes e1, Ulman played uh, Swishinsug, which, unlike me, he pronounced correctly because he's Wolfgang Ulman. Oh, oh, Wolfgang Ulman. And he played the move, which I think Velimirovich didn't see. That's what I think. I can't ask the players for obvious reasons. Now, I know that Hearthstone exists, and I know that Sviddler likes it. That, that's all I got. If I was watching Hearthstone, I'm not sure it's pronounced that way, and then Fall Guy or Fallout Boy, and, and what's the other one that I don't know anything about? Uh, Fortnite, if I saw three games, I wouldn't know which game is which. I don't, I don't know nothing. Nothing. I can barely know what chess is. That's right. Um, what's your name? Palosiosito. That's right. Uh, Rook e6 doesn't work because it blocks the queen from the f pawn. So now white's winning. But rook d6 does work. Okay. And we have a funny trick here. If you play queen g5 check, which seems sort of obvious, rook g6, goddamn, I said goddamn. You can't take this. Because I wish to zoot you again and take your queen. Your, your knight's pinned. You can't move your queen because I mate you. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you it's, it's a paradox. Okay. So probably he missed that when he did this, uh, Velimirovich. He missed that this is just winning. Just winning. Yeah, and this is over. He could resign here. He played knight d7, confusing the audience. Somebody has to confuse the audience. He was hoping after takes, you know, knight takes, forking everything. But he just took the rook and he said, whatever. And blacks up a rook, so white resigned. That was the end of that game. So that game was sort of like equal, nothing much happening. Then when the tactics happened, Ulman outcalculated Velimirovich. Velimirovich was known as an attacking player. The Velimirovich Sicilian and the Sozin, that's pretty sharp, right? You know what I mean. No, you don't. Named after Grandmaster Attack. That's right. Sviddler's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Somebody confusing Ulman with Morphe. It happens. Yeah. So that game was was an equal game until it wasn't. But yeah, Rook D6 is a monster move. So in this position, Bishop takes E1 as a draw because of the perpetual. Rook d6 wins, as was played, and all other moves lose. So there's like, if there's 30 legal moves here, 28 of them lose, this draws, and this wins. 
So Wollongong played the winning move, and that's that's what happened. Yeah, the only winning move. Now, if I may, at the risk of insulting the whole Earth, but none of the other planets or the rest of the universe, just Earth. At the lower levels, people who are rated lower than the top people in the world, this is very common. You got some crazy tactical line. It doesn't work. White misses rook d6. And sometimes black plays rook d6 and wins. Sometimes black doesn't play rook d6 and loses and draws. They analyze the game with an engine. They're like, all right, I don't know. Okay. That happens all the time at all the levels. At the very highest level in slow chess, not in rapid and blitz, if you got, you know, Caruana and Carlson and Nepo and that, when they're analyzing and they have a lot of time on their clock, they see that Rook D6 wins, so they willingly go in with black, and then white doesn't do this because white sees Rook D6 wins. Otherwise, it's a blunder, and he's ashamed of himself. In Blitz and Bullet and Rapid, a lot of those kinds of players would miss Rook D6 if they had white. Then they'd be like, oh my god, Rook D6, I'm losing. Okay, This was a slow game. These players aren't as good as the top 10 players in the world. Ulman was good. Velimirovic was good, but this was later in their careers. So, you know, Velimirovic misses Rook D6, and he's like, oh, well, that's why I'm not top 10 in the world. I miss a move and I have to resign. When you're calculating tactics where there are winning and losing and drawing moves and the game is over, you can't go into the lines that lose ever. Then you'll never be a top player because you'll calculate, you'll go into the losing and go, ah, and then you'll resign. Well, how are you going to be a top player that way? You can be if those are your bullet games and your blitz games because your opponents won't see your mistakes and you can make more mistakes. But if you're playing slow chess, you can't be making a tactical blunder overlooking rook d6 and going, oh, well, I guess I lose. I mean, you can do it, but you won't be one of the top players in the world unless you do it like once every 10 years. If you do it every game, which is the problem I have with a lot of my students, you calculate, you miss a move in your calculation, calculation's wrong. And if you're going to make a strategical error like Geller did, when he traded on e5, instead of leaving black with isolated pawn, he went from slightly better to clearly worse. But he still could have drawn or won the game if he had played better later. Even after he was losing, Ulman let him off the hook. Okay, now now Sally, he wasn't let off the hook. Okay, Abe Vigoda said, for old time's sake, and he says, can't do it, Sally. He wasn't let off the hook. He said, can you get me off the hook? And then he said, tell Michael I always liked him. It was just business. But here at the super GM level, when you blunder, they don't let you off the hook. So then you know, you're off the hook. And that's why people in the 2000s and 2010s, one of the favorite phrases was something was off the hook. Not bad, subscribe. Not bad, not bad. God damn. And that's why the God, Godfather is the best movie. That's right. Martians are not insulted. no. No. Yeah, Godfather and Godfather 2 are pretty good. Pretty, pretty good movies. <clears throat> okay, now we have a non-French defense. Okay, and we, 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 we got a, uh, a game against Tony Miles. If I can find where to click the, yeah, there we go. And for those of you who just came here late, um, Grandmaster Ulman was 85 years old. Passed away two days ago, and we're, we're showing his greatest games. Because I said so. It's my stream. Okay, Tony Miles. I've never played Ulman. I don't think I've ever met him, but I've played to Tony Miles several times. I've played Tony Miles in two continents, two hemispheres. God damn. 100 cent to do's, 100 cent to do's again. Another train. You got, Godfather 2 is pretty good. Godfather 1 or 2. So here's the thing. For most people, the deciding factor is how much do you like Robert De Niro? If you like Robert De Niro from the 70s or always, 
you're probably going to like Godfather 2 more. If the actors in the movie don't persuade you to like the movie, you just like the movie on its own merits, then it's unclear because Marlon Brando isn't a bad actor either. Also, they play in the same character, which is suspicious. So I think I think they're equally good. And they're, I mean, obviously the end of the first Godfather, that's a great ending. Yeah. Also, the end of the second Godfather is a great ending. When when Fredo's doing the Hail Mary, the Hail Marys, the, uh, wait, what am I trying to say? What, what am I trying to say? It's not Hail Mary. I'm not religious and I haven't watched football in a while. What, what am I thinking of here? Getting confused. But Lord's Prayer. What? Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Well, that's, you know, yeah. It is, it is Hail Mary. What? What? No. Anyway, that's a great scene in the boat. Yeah. It is Hail Mary. All right. Milk the Funk subscribed. All right. R.I.P. Funkhauser. Yeah. Yeah, Marlon Brando was uh, was was pretty good. Yeah, pretty pretty good. I mean, both movies are great. Yeah. Well, get your shine box. Wait a minute, that's a different movie. Well, wait, wait a second here. All right. So this is Miles versus Ullman, and it's our first non-French defense. Uh, let me see what year this was. Nineteen seventy-six. Okay, so Miles was pretty good in 76. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, Ullman was was telling, you know, the you know, the, the organizers of the tournament, he says, I'm, I think I'm gonna retire. And then the organizers went to Miles and said, You gonna retire too? And Miles said, Not me. I'm in my prime. So that's that's what happens. Strange conversation. Okay, so Miles is white. Ulaman gets some kind of, you know, King's Indian English type of position. More of an English than a King's Indian. Yeah. Uh, Tariq DC subscribe. Good, good. I agree. All right, this looks pretty equal. Yeah, this looks this looks like chess. Yeah. The engine says it's equal. No. Oh. I think a lot of grandmasters would be happy to have black here because white hasn't advanced on the queen's side with like rook b1, b5, and black's got f5 in. Black's really solid. Jimbo Matthews gave two subs. Okay, he played bishop, e, bishop f7. Good, good. Nobody trade and finally somebody did something. D five. Engine agrees. C five seems like you're giving black the center. I'm not sure about that move. I wouldn't be too happy about that. All right, this looks like I'm playing both sides. It's all blocked up. B five seems right. G five seems right. All right, the engine says white should play F three or F four to try to stop black from doing stuff. But he played queen a4, attack at the c pawn. He defended it. Rook b1, I think the rook should have went to b1 in the first place. Man, that Ullman, he's always getting his bishop over here. That Ullman, that's his, that's his favorite maneuver. Good maneuver too. Yeah, this looks pretty, pretty good for black. Pretty good. Curious chimpanzee. Yeah, yeah, this looks great for black. Takes, takes, queen a6, trying to infiltrate. No, no. Now he put it in h, knight h5, he really wants to play f4. The engine doesn't like this move, but I mean, obvious intentions over here. Bishop h3 is good. Rook f6, god damn, Ullman's not kidding around. Uh, 200 cents to do is it's the Ulman maneuver from McJurgal. So the engine doesn't like knight h5, rook f6, and says the game is equal now. And then it doesn't like knight a4. 
Knight a4, obviously, he wants to play bishop a5, frankly. Okay, rook bf8, doubling up on the bubble up. Uh, rook fe1, the engine actually likes rook fe1. Knight b8, the engine likes that move too. Queen b7, queen d8, sacrificing his a-pawn, and he's going all in. So the engine says white's winning because the engine doesn't believe in black's attack and thinks white should play the move rook b7, doubling up on the bubble up. Miles played the second best move, bishop a5, queen e8, now the engine thinks it's about equal, bishop c7, it says that's double question mark. No, now it says it's okay. Knight d7, bishop to d6, rook f7. I mean, basically, white's completely winning on the queen's side, and black's completely winning on the king's side. But if black doesn't mate white or win material, eventually white's going to win. Eventually. And the engine prefers white here. Rook b7, g4. God damn, this is too complicated for me. Always play bishop f1. That's correct. Fe, F E is for us. The engine says it's equal. Bishop takes E2. Bishop takes E2. He's going to triple up on the bubble up. Queen E6. So the engine doesn't like bishop takes or queen E6 and says Miles is now winning. I assume the players are in time trouble now. Always play bishop F8. And in this position, Miles makes a bad move. He should play queen d8 or queen c8 or knight b6. And it says white's, white's winning. But instead, Miles wanted to block up the f file. Pretty sure he was in time trouble. Uh, 40 seconds left in the hype train. Let's go. And played bishop f4. After bishop f4, black is still worse. Takes. And now he made the losing move. Boo, boo. I would bet a lot of money he was in horrible time trouble here. All right. So first of all, let's get three or four subs so we can get to level four. Then when we're done with that, you guys in the chat have to predict what the correct move is for white. You got to take one way or the other. First one, then the other. Miles took the wrong way and the game ended quickly. If he takes the right way, the engine says he still has a big advantage. And a lot of top grandmaster chess is like that. Is, you know, positions unclear. Somebody makes a really bad move and it's over. As opposed to, like, this guy played great and this guy played bad. They play about the same strength and then somebody blunders in time trouble. Uh, let's see. Two, 300 centidus from Xanth13. 400 centidus from Gunjin959. 100 centidus from Mr. Josco. Such great support. Let's see. G takes looks insane. G takes is correct. Oh. I don't think D4 is hanging either way. There's, what is this, a bishop? Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what's funny about that. One of the moves, these moves, it says white's plus 1.8. The other move... It says black is plus 11. I, I wouldn't kid you. Yeah, defending is, is not easy. It's funny. Miles looked really far ahead, but not far ahead enough. And when they asked Miles, how do you see so far ahead? His answer was, I can see for miles and miles. I can see for miles. That was his answer. Strange answer. Yeah. Let's see, like a rabid vet, bat. COVID. Right. Go Tigers. Okay. The correct answer is E takes F4 and White's better. Miles played G takes F4 and Black played a move. And black's like plus 10, plus 11. What's the winning move for black? E 
G3 looks scary. That is correct. Also, Rook H6 should win, but it's not as good. Yeah, and then the infiltration occurs. Now, Miles didn't take the pawn. If you do take the pawn, which he didn't do, after this, it says black is plus 32. God damn. Yeah, I mean, you can't. You can't defend the pawn even. Now it says made in nine. Uman's German, so it's made in nine. Yeah, like this is the best move. Man, the truth hurts. So terrible blunder from Miles. Miles played bishop h5. Check. Put it in h. Rook g7. All Every move wins for black, not just the moves he's playing. But the moves he's playing are fine. And obviously, black has completely crashed through. Bam! Queen takes h2 check. The engine actually prefers queen g3, um, but they both win. Queen g3 is an even easier win, but this is obviously more fun to play. You have to play queen e8, obviously. And then knight f6, and now you have to resign. So... Miles defended well. His position was okay. Took with the wrong pawn and was over immediately. And just like that, he's gone. Yeah, queen h2 is, is pretty. That's right. And then he resigned. It says best for white is this. Um, takes, takes, takes. And black is plus four. And so on. This pawn's not dangerous, obviously. It hasn't moved yet, and it can be blocked. Yeah. So, yeah, knight f6 resigns. Very suspicious. So my question is, what, what happens? Oh, oh, if knight takes, I have queen takes check. I didn't see queen takes f8. Otherwise, my move is good. But now my move is not good. Yeah. All right. Good game from, from Ulman. Miles played okay until he didn't. Okay. Last game. Finally, Ulman gets the white pieces. I saved it till the end. And he's playing former world chess champion Vasily Smyslov. And my goal for this lecture was... Not only to show you Ullman's nice wins, but to make sure his opponents were very strong so you knew how strong he was. If I had like, you know, Wolfgang versus Doofus and Wolfgang versus Rufus and Wolfgang versus Kraftwerk, you'd be like, I'd beat those guys. But I haven't beaten Fisher and Geller and Miles and Smyslov. You, you didn't beat those guys. Okay. And I only, I only beat two of them. Bam! Oh, wait a minute. I beat... Damn, I beat three of them. God damn. I beat Smyslov in a simul, not in a real game, but I beat Miles and Bronstein over the board. I guess I'll lecture about my games next time. Yeah. If he didn't lose immediately. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so Wolfgang, he's playing the English even though he's German. Very confusing. Still theory... Yeah, this actually, this position occurred in many Super Grandmaster games, including like Carlson and Caruana and Karpov and Kasparov in the World Championship match. This position too, this is, yeah, this is still theory. Okay, now what, what year was this game played? 1973. Yeah, Smyslov was pretty good in 73. God damn. Smyslov in 84 was a candidate for the world championship and played Kasparov in the finals to see who would play Karpov. So, I mean, you know, Smyslov's pretty good in 73. All right, E4. The engine likes all these moves. Knight B6. D4. It doesn't like Knight B6. Yeah, the engine already likes White's position. I'm thinking D5 doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I was right. This is a book position, but I think nobody plays d5. I think d5 is just a bad move because you're just handing over the center to white. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is just great for white. Yeah, white's got the two bishops, the center, the f file, the vatals. Man, it's that vatals that's tough. Putting he's putting it in h. God damn, h four h five. Yeah, that'll do it. Bam, gotcha, Vasily. Oh snap! It's triple pawn time. The engine says h takes g5 is forced. If you move the bishop, rook takes f7. So you have to get the triple pawns. Triple pawns are three times as good. All right, queen, queen a4 is the best move, according to the engine. Confusing the audience. Queen a4. If your opponent plays queen a4, you can report them to chess.com and their account will be banned. And the idea is if queen takes queen, bishop takes d5, it actually plays rook e6? Well, it doesn't matter. And then rook f2, and then papa john's. Yeah. If your opponent plays queen a4, you report him to, yeah. Okay, he played queen f3, also good. c6 is forced. Bishop g5. And white didn't even sack anything. White has a passed pawn. Two bishops against two knights, the big center, the open F file, the double pawns, the open H file, the weak white squares, terrible. Yeah, here, Rook H2, Papa John's. Doubling up on the bubble up. Yeah, this king's a goner. Sacking the exchange. Yeah, here the engine just resigns with black because Rick H2 is coming and then it's, it's just double, triple checkmate. Yeah. Yeah, the engine says he should resign. This was nice. See, I wanted to play queen here and then rook takes and then mate, but I can't jump over my king. So Ulman played King G2. <laughs> and then Black blundered. Uh, if he plays Queen D5, this ending is plus five for White because White pushes his pawn here. So Queen D5 is the best move. Then after Queen takes, pawn takes E6, E7, Rook F8. That's the best Black can do. Instead, he played here and Ulman once again said, you will know. Bam! Gotcha, Smyslov. Pretty nice knights, though. And obviously the idea is checkmate. Okay. But he resigned after queen f8. So those were Ulman's best games. He beat Fisher. He beat Geller. He beat uh, uh, Velimirovich. He beat Smyslov. He beat Miles. He beat a lot of other strong grandmasters, too. A lot of his wins were with black. And the French defense, go, go Ulman. And Ulman passed away two days ago. He actually was playing chess in his 80s. He didn't stop playing chess. He wasn't as good, but, you know. But, yeah, he was a real chess lover. 11-time German champion, you know, East Germany. Let me read his thing to you. He learned chess at the age of 11 in Dresden. Uh, international master in 56, grandmaster in 59. And he was born in 35. Um, let's see. He was the, in the Olympiads. He played in 11 Olympiads between 56 and 90, mainly on the top board. In Tel Aviv 64, he scored 83%, winning gold medal on board one. Yeah, pretty good. Then he won the bronze medal in Havana in 66. In Palmans and Mallorca, Interzolo in 70, he tied for fifth and made the candidates' matches, but lost to Larson five and a half, three and a half. That's the best he did playing for the World Championship. Also, et cetera. Uh, and there's a lot of other, they talk a lot about whatever. Yeah. He played in the senior tournament where they had the young people and the women versus the old people. They like to do that, have these weird tournaments. When he was 77, um, 
the most beautiful game of the event was a game that he won with Black against Kalishninskaya, even though he was 77. Man, truth hurts. Yeah. Go Ulman. Uh, yeah. His highest FIDE rating was in 78, 2575. Today, since that was a long time ago, that'd be like 2975 today. No, but still that's, you know, obviously top 20 in the world. Yeah. Yeah, back in the 70s, if you were over 2550 FIDE, you were pretty good. They didn't have a lot of high-rated players then. Crazy. Karpov was world champion. It was 2690. Now everybody's rating is 2800. But, you know, back in the day. Steinitz and Smyslov. What? What's going on? You have trouble activating your dark squared bishop. What? Maybe you go to the doctor and they can give an orthopedic, you know, they can make your hand, you know. Exactly. Yeah, go Ulman. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I had a French defense book, and either Ulman wrote the book, or all the games were his, where he was black, or both. It was like RHM Press. I think Ulman wrote the book. He was one of the authors. That was before you guys were born. Now, if you don't know what a book is, which is most of you, it's the internet on trees. So hopefully you understand now. Yeah. No, they're overshadowing the RNC. No. I think chess and Fortnite are, are like that, son. Also, what's Fortnite? Yeah. Ratings inflation is inevitable. You still have books. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Now, tomorrow's Thursday... So theoretically, I stream from 5 to 7. But in practice, I stream when I want. But if I hardly ever stream from 5 to 7, but I'm supposed to. So if you're European or British or both, if you're British, you don't know what the EU is, but then, you know, it's reasonable time for you guys. Not too reasonable. Yeah, go Trump. How could they do that to the Republican National Convention? No. Minecraft, that's very popular in my house, but not with me and Karen, but with other people. I think Karen played Minecraft once. Right. And I think Holden and Archer are the world's leading authorities. So I should play Minecraft because, you know, Rick likes it from Rick and Morty. So. You met a guy who saw a book once? That's pretty good. Yeah. Someday I hope to do that. Yeah. All right, don't forget... Go Ulman, you're the best, better than all the rest. And also RIP, and RIP to Miron Share also. All right, see you guys tomorrow, bye.